Devastating, merciless first round destruction of the man from Denmark, Kem, Lung Kem Lundquist Larsen. And he had an equally dominant display. Did Kunkabeev a comprehensive win over the German super heavyweight Max Keller? Ben McGarrigal of Ireland is the referee, giving the final instruction to these two men who are keen to get it on and resume their rivalry. So we're underway in the 91 kilogram plus super heavyweight division. This battle of southpaws picks men from Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan against one another. And what a rivalry those two nations have. The two of them exchanging southpaw jab to begin this contest. And the taller box are wearing red is the reigning Asian Championships gold medalist, that is Bakadir Jalolov, 23 years of age, and his opponent, wearing blue, also boxing out of the South Pole stance, his 25-year-old, Hamshibek Gunkabeev. Bakadir Jalolov, the reigning World Championship bronze medalist, and his performance, in Doha, Qatar, two years ago, we lost to the even taller figure, which is a rare occurrence for him at Ivan Dichko. Dichko stands six foot nine, remember? There's no prizes for guessing the styles and tactics here for both boxes. Jalalov has got a box at range, keep his distance, box behind his jab, hold in centre of the ring and bring that left uppercut through if his opponent closes the gap down. And Kukabayev totally the opposite, he's the shorter man, got to target the body and also got to target his ring position in terms of pushing his opponent back from the centre and pushing him back to the ropes. This fella in red has got the height and reach. If, he, if Kukabayev allows him to use that, then it could be a long and um, a bad night for Kukabayev. So he's got to sort of push his opponent back to the ropes, restrict the movement, and then, because when a boxer gets on the ropes, his feet always will come square, and that's when that target area will be full on to Kukabayev and he can work the body. You see, Kukabai has got to do better there on, on the inside. He's the shorter man. He's trying to whip that right left hand over the top. He's got a good chance of landing it if Jalalov keeps lowering that right hand of his. But on the inside, the man in blue should be doing better because that's the opportunity that he's got. If Jalalov keeps boxing at range, it's going to be difficult for Kukabai to actually get to him. So when he's in at close quarters, he's got to do better than man in blue. Just speaking to the law of about illegal use of the shoulder and also punching correctly. Closing seconds of the opening round. Counter left hand is a beauty, and then the right hand from the Jalalov is an effective shot as well. He's really loading up on that back hand. The subsequent follow ups were out of range. Kabeev, in the meantime, is missing badly and he's being mocked now by the man in red. 
Well, this fella, Jalal Lava, thought had the better the exchanges in the opening round. Good left hand there as Kunkabayev kept uh, coming forward, but towards the end of the round, Kunkabayev kept falling short with his attacks. So, a better round for this man, I think. And Kunkabayev has got to think about closing the gap quicker, doing more on the inside, getting his timing right with that left hand over the top. It's still there for him, but he's one round down. <laughs> So we're into the second round of this 91 kilogram feet for heavyweight contest. Kukabayev has had his hand raised against Black Kadir Jalalov. They met in the third round of season seven of World Boxing, World Series boxing over five rounds early this year. Good left hand again from Jalalov. And on that occasion, it was the man in blue who prevailed holding Kazakhstan Ashton Arlins against the Uzbek Tigers. Here we are in the comparative sprint of the three-round format as we were at the Asian Championships early this summer. And now there's more left-hand success for the man in blue. Yeah, it was a good shot, that was. So, uh, Rob, he's got away with it up to now, hasn't he, with that low lead hand of his. But, uh, Kukabayev has landed, and again, that was a good shot. Down the pipe. He walks on to another one. You've got to keep that right hand higher, as Jarlov. Just looking to his corner as he went walk about there. Over a minute gone in the second round. And he's at his best, Jalolov, when he's able to be a sharp shooting operator. Get behind that hard right jab and whip over a big left. But another right jab cracks home from Kunkabayev. And look at his footwork now. He's warming to this task. Jalolov being forced square on the ropes. He invites his man in. But his accuracy has decreased. What's happening here, Ronald, as well? Kunkabayev is making Jalalov work on the outside. Um, the movement from him, Kunkabayev is just cutting that ring space off a little bit better. Good left hand from Jalalov. Left hand to the same time now, trying to make that long left jab. Long left hand to the body could well slow down the movement of Jalalov. And then a hard left cross again, Jalalov backing himself into a place of confinement. And Kunkabayev unloaded with a strong left cross over the top. And there's some bad signs here for the man in red in terms of, of his fitness because he seems to be tiring in this round roll. He's done a lot of work on the outside. Look, there are the signs. Look, he's holding on. He's trying to walk back to the centre, trying to just buy a few, a few more seconds. But that's bad body language for me from the man in red. And we've seen him unravel before in terms of his fitness. Remember he against um, Joe Joyce, was it in the Olympic Games? Yep, I remember. Right. In 2016, Rio, he really came apart because Joe Joyce was constantly walking him down and making him move on the outside. Let's see if, see if his fitness is going to hold up here. As at the quarter-final stage, Jalolov finished sixth in Rio. Again, he's standing still and inviting pressure. Kukabayev has been encouraged this round. There's another left-hand success again. And it's notable that Jalolov is the man to initiate the clinch. to show your opponent or the corner that type of fatigue and distress in the ring. A huge intake of breath, grabbing onto the top rope to hang on before he slumped onto his stool. Yeah, bad signs there from Jalalov. So you've got to pick yourself up and that's focus there in that corner. Uzbekistan corner is to motivate their boxer. They've got to try and motivate him back. Try and make him work a lot harder in this last round. But here, Kukabayev had a good round, didn't he, on that front foot. Jalalov on the outside, exerting a lot of energy. Kukabayev landed with some nice shots over the top there.
look at that. I suppose you could call it experience from the Uzbek corner because they gave the full 60 permitted seconds and then and then some by inserting the mouthpiece late to ensure that Jalolov had maximum time to recover after he displayed signs of fatigue at the conclusion of the second. And that is perhaps why Hamshibek Kunkabeyev has come out and got right onto the front foot trying to apply pressure on Jalolov. What we know about Jalolov is that he's very game. But is he, going to be able to, is he going to be allowed to demonstrate that gameness and commitment and courage? If his fitness lets him down, but that's a pal driving left cross he just got through with. I think from Jalalov now it's going to be the odd single shot, maybe a one-two, and then he's going to hold and he's going to try and see this contest out. But Kunkabaev, totally different um, style, isn't it? In terms of the work rate, he's the one who's pushing and forcing the contest now. He's up in the tempo. He can sense that his opponent is getting more and more tired. And that's why Kunkabaev is on that front foot, trying to force the contest. The men in such close proximity in the boxing ring, they'll be here, able to hear the breathing patterns of one another. But this is where Kunkabaev has got to work on, most certainly. A close range like that, being a shorter boxer, all of this is Jalala buying time, yes. stealing precious seconds in which to recover. Because you can bet in the second half of the, of the round, he's going to try and launch another big attack. And remember, up in the heaviest weight class of all, with boxers like this, it's not inconceivable that one punch could end the contest. So displaying a veteran's experience here is Jalalov, despite being just 23 years of age, because he's picking his spots. But surely, oh, that's a wonderful left cross, and again, Jalalov holding on. Rocked down to his boots by that shot. Minute to go in the third and final round. Interesting to see if Jalalov keeps on holding, whether the referee will, will take a point here, because it's quite evident he's getting more and more tired, and he's going to try and hold on to every opportunity, is the man in red. So will the referee take a point? But Kulkabayev has just got to keep going. He's got to keep punching. Jalalov struggling to retain his stance. He takes another left cross. Cuffing shots exchanged on the inside, missing with a rather crude looking lead right hook, Jalolov. And again, he appears desperately tied up there in the boxing ring. Trapped against the ropes, swings a southpaw left. On him, right in his chest, is Kunkabeyev. Timeout called. Mouthpiece has come out, and again, that's the sign of a fatiguing fighter when you can't hold the mouthpiece in your mouth. And that is why it is an offence that is punishable if it happens repeatedly because a fatiguing fighter can spit it out to buy time because it has to be rinsed and reinserted. Ben McGarrigal will be keeping an eye on this, the referee. Closing seconds, he's likely to make it through without infraction. That's a big left cross landed by Jalolov. And again he holds on there. So Jalolov has got through this round. I think he's been a lucky lad at times here. He has been a little bit lenient with him there, Rob. Well, Jalalov thinks he's done enough. That may be more in hope than expectation. This man had a terrific conclusion to the second round. He was landing the cleaner punches in the third. There were a couple of eye-catching left crosses from Jalalov, but his shape was betraying him in the third and final round. And he took a particularly thunderous left cross that caused him to become disorganized I think in the last round it was the man in blue that did the better work he just gets caught with a good shot there but he's the one that seemed to um, have more urgency in his work good left hand from him there overall well, which way is this one going to go winner 3-2 over his familiar rival from Uzbekistan Bakadir Jalolov eliminated at the quarter-final stage and the man who took world championship bronze in Doha Qatar two years ago has been put out of the tournament by a man who he now shares a three-fight rivalry with but the victory here on the global stage secured by Kamshibek Kunkabayev
edges the rivalry in his favor and is perhaps the most significant one of all. It means that he has secured a world championship medal by making it through to the final four. I think overall, Ron, the judges got it right there. I think Kunkabayev, you know, it's a 3 2 split decision. It was very close, but he's the one that seemed to want it a little bit more in that last round. And uh, the holding tactics from Jalalov certainly backfired. And yeah, I think they got it right there, the judges. That's what it means to the man from Kazakhstan. He's earned himself a world championship.